All right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Merriman? Here. Mr. Matter? Here. Dr. Scarpone? Absent. Fiscal officer? Absent. Solicitor, Mr. Lynn? Present. Mayor Mike Petrola? Present. Administrator, Mr. Kasegi? Present. Mr. DiStefano? Absent. Mr. Spence? Here. Mrs. Dameron? Here. Here. Everyone tonight, we're going to do a uh, our moment of silence and our pledge. We are also going to try to remember an employee that just passed away here at the village, Joe Crow. He was part time with us. He was a great man. Um, I just worked with him not too long ago down on Rex Avenue. So we'll remember him this evening and all those at Tusky Valley School with their tragedy that happened this week. So if you will, please stand for a moment of silence and the pledge. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Randy Spence as administrator and or clerk for this meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. Merriman. Yes. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence? Yay. Ms. Dameron? Yay. Everyone get a chance to read over last council meeting minutes from November 2nd, 2023. We would need a motion to approve those. Make a motion to approve the minutes from the council meeting on Thursday, November 2nd. Second. Mr. Merriman? Yay. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence? Yay. Mrs. Dameron? Yay. All right. Is there anyone wishing to appear before council this evening? Okay. Moving along. I will turn it over to our solicitor, Jake Lynn, for our, we have one ordinance tonight. Um, and before I go, uh, Randy, can I get, I wanted to address what we talked about downstairs. This is only a two thirds vote to pass by a majority, um, an emergency. So if all four were to vote unanimously, it could pass tonight. Okay. What we were talking about before was a three quarters majority. This is only a- For the suspension of rules. Yeah. But and so not for the actual ordinance. Right, so we okay. could do we could potentially do it tonight if you wanted to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> an ordinance providing uh, ordinance number twenty twenty three dash seventy, an ordinance providing a per pay stipend of one hundred and fifty dollars and zero cents to the canine handler officer for the village of Wintersville and declaring an emergency. <clears throat> I make a motion to suspend the rules for 2023-70. Second. Mr. Merriman. Yay. Mr. Mattern. Yay. Mr. Spence. Yay. Mrs. Dameron. Yay. I make a motion to accept ordinance 2023-70. I got a question. Has he already has, has the handler already gotten the hundred the, the hundred and fifty per pay before? Only two pays. He's got he's got retro coming for October first, the day he got certified. So he only he's only has two pays. So is is the retro in this one or we'll have to do a retro? Retro is in this one. Yes. Okay. Under yes. Section it's, it's, two. It's, just want to make sure. Uh, motion's on the floor. I need a second. Second. Mr. Merriman. Yeah. Mr. Mattern. Yay. Mr. Spence, yay. Ms. Dameron. Yay. All right, that's all of our ordinances this evening. A few announcements. Our final leave pickup will be this coming Monday, November 20th. Again, if somebody gets missed or anything like that, just call the office, not a big deal. Wintersville Christmas Parade will be December 3rd. That's Sunday at 4 o'clock. 
If you're interested in participating, please call the village office and ask for Tammy. And then we have the Wintersville Winter Weekend taking place December 2nd and December 3rd. I will give a quick rundown of the weekend's events. Saturday, December 2nd, from 11 to 2, we will have the Luminary pre-sale at different businesses. 4 to 8 p.m., there will be the ice skating rink at the Village Building. 4 to 5 p.m. will be opening ceremonies and a Christmas concert at Wintersville Methodist Church. 5 p.m. will be the lighting of the luminaries along Main Street. And 6 p.m. will be a chili cook-off at Easy Fresh Meals. Sunday, December 3rd, from 2 to 6, will be the ice skating rink at the Village Building with music and craft and food vendors. 4 p.m. will be our Christmas parade along Main Street. And 5 p.m. we'll be doing the Christmas lighting here at the Village Building. With all of the announcements on the reports and communications, Mr. Lockhart, are you ready, sir? <coughs> you came a little late there. Well, I was just a little doubt. I got to pass this out to you. <laughs> Thank you. Here. Oh, yeah, I can't. Uh, no, she don't need it. She was at the meeting. I'll explain all this uh, as soon as I get a chance. It's yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. Thanks to the village for copying some of this stuff today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Uh, tonight, the first thing I will be talking about will be my uh, attendance at the Seven Ranges meeting on uh, November, <coughs> on November 16th. Uh, that's today. Uh, at that meeting at Seven Ranges, that was the night after the election. Uh, and the campaign uh, with regard to the new levy. Uh, <clears throat> the only difference is uh, uh, Brian Applegate, the trustee that was appointed by Island Creek to serve on the board, he didn't show up for the meeting and it was determined that he did not run for re-election. So we only have the one representative for now, and I'm sure in the near uh, future they'll uh, appoint somebody to fill his slot. All of the members of the fire department that were there, the trustees and two representatives of two fire departments, they were asked to get, uh, provide information regarding their <coughs> comments concerning the uh, levy, and uh, each one of them did so accordingly. It was very positive. With regard to uh, Rob Harrington, he provided updated information concerning uh, the uh, fire levy, noting that he was at the polling place and several people came up to him and acknowledged their satisfaction with regard to specific individual uh, services rendered by the, service, the district, basically, of Wintersville Fire Department. Very, very positive. As a result of the levy, it passed 65.54 percent, which is very good. It was a replacement levy, basically. <clears throat> it would, that would bring the levy up to the standards of the current evaluation of property at 6%. <clears throat> so that as a result of that, the district would be able to keep up with the increases through the fire departments individually 
gasoline, equipment, etc. So the levy was uh, <coughs> well received. Uh, I give him a lot of credit and the other members of the fire department for uh, letting the public know <coughs> what transpired with regard to the levy as a result of his positive. Uh, the outcome. Uh, <coughs> he advised that a, uh, the, the fire department received, uh, the training center, I should say, received a $110,000 uh, award with regard to uh, operation of a program results. Uh, for the specific, I could not recall what I was doing in the industry. Maybe a customer, matter, matter will remember. Uh, uh, with regard to the levy, the five or six now with Island Creek departments will receive <coughs> money allocated to their specific department based upon the money that was uh, set up in the evaluation of the property and the number of citizens that live within the district uh, that uh, uh, voted on the levy. So all of the six will receive some substantial increase with regard to equipment purchase, operational uh, efforts, uh, which is its a benefit, uh, will benefit the department and the community. Uh, with regard to the fire training center, Harrington advised that to date about 400 people have gone through the program, very positive receipt in the area surrounding Ohio here in our, our community. He also said there are two classes pending for next year, and he is still in the process of acquiring new individuals that can uh, pro uh, provide expertise within the area of uh, fire training. That's going on, uh, and he'll be doing that also. So, other than that, it was a productive meeting. If uh, Councilman Mattern can think of anything else at this time, I'd set the floor to him. No, Bob, just a feather on off. It, it's, um, you know, it's uh, real nice to see the progress that they're making over there at the training center. It's now in live action. There are having individuals coming on through and training. And, um, you know, it's a boost to surrounding communities as well. Uh, Bob briefly touched upon the additional tax revenues is going to be created because this levy went on through. It's all dollars well spent and reinvested into the safety of this community. So, uh, and are the communities that are held within the seven ranges. One thing you didn't mention, Bob, that I had written down here was um, you talked about the polling stations and the fire levy. The, uh, the wording on that levy was um, uh, confusing a little bit. And uh, during the meeting, that confusion was discussed a little bit. And it was also brought up that there was a call that happened where the first responders that were at the polling station had to leave. And it was very grateful for all those individuals who were standing and had a full knowledge of uh, the, the, the confusing wording to help promote that levy. And one of those individuals was, was Mike Petrella there. And they was very thankful of the efforts that he put forth on election day, making sure this levy got passed. So uh, on behalf of the seven ranges, we absolutely want to uh, thank you for your efforts there and uh, describing, um, you know, what that levy was all about and which way, um, you know, the, the, it, it really helped out the community. So great job there. Bob, I don't really remember anything else on that meeting. That, that's really all I have. That's about it. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, next uh, report on my attendance at the Brook Hank at Jefferson County Metropolitan Committee TAC meeting, commission meeting on the 15th. <coughs> uh, other than the minutes being a, 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 a passed and uh, from September 21, 2023, there was three, three or four resolutions. The first one being a West Virginia suballocation funding policy. Basically, that incorporated the census figures from 2020 for the Steubenville-Weirton area. And the population at that time 
64,981 people. Now, this suballocation matter is pertaining to communities with the 50 and $200,000 uh, uh, population. Specific grants and uh, a carbon reduction program. Uh, <coughs> BHJ has set guidelines with regard to meeting the requirements to get these obligated funds provided uh, to Brook County and Hancock County. Uh, <clears throat> as a result, West Virginia must meet the obligation in, in connection with the obligations. They must meet the standards set up by BHJ, which they will uh, uh, do in the future. Projects eligible must be <coughs> consistent with BHJ's long-range plan. <coughs> Once these are adopted, process West Virginia Department of Operation, respective to their operation uh, and procedures, uh, they will be part of the metropolitan planning uh, of BHJ. As far as uh, the targets respective to safety, that last year there were five categories that the Department of Transportation federally in, uh, incorporated and uh, in the, uh, the demands from that department. And uh, the state of Ohio has complied with these five demand, these five requests to lower by 2% five areas, mainly safety areas. <clears throat> State of Ohio has passed it, BHJ has accepted it, but now the only problem is there's a 180-day period that West Virginia must comply with the same and or introduce their own reduction plan in these five categories. So that's where it stands at this time. <clears throat> Other than that, if I may jump into uh, hold that one second here. This, uh, this next resolution covered a period of 2024 to 2027, and it would, it, <clears throat> it's a connection with uh, funding that has been set up by BHJ that must be complied with uh, through Jefferson, Brook, and Hancock County. <clears throat> One more to get one more resolution for you is in the paper today there was uh, an article spelling out uh, the procedure with regard to the bridge at Market Street. I've given each council person a several page, I can't remember how many pages there is to it with regard to a funding approach that is going to be utilized and is directed to the Secretary of the Department of Transportation in Washington, D.C. This, this spells out the process of possible funding of the new bridge uh, in the future. Attached to the application that you have, Near the end, there are several photographs of the current situation and condition of the Market Street Bridge. They're now in the process of, by West Virginia, quarterly, that bridge is inspected. Generally, it's a yearly oh inspected for bridges in Ohio. This is quarterly because the bridge is in terrible 
basically categorized as poor condition. I thought, I mean, I obtained copies for you to have, so you could see what the situation is. It's very bad. Attached to that, I gave you a four-page survey. All I can do is suggest strongly that if you get a few minutes, you can fill that out. It doesn't require your name. It does require a couple of things with regard to income. You may not want to do that either. But to express your opinion concerning the need to replace that bridge, the more people that address this issue and get it back to a BHJ, it would be a benefit to the community to get that thing taken care of. I've been around a long time with regard to that bridge. And they had about seven or eight years ago, they had several million dollars to try to improve the condition. And it's deteriorated to a point now you can see in the, the pictures that I've given you. Uh, and I think all I can do is, even if the council as a unit could address and send a letter to BHJ in support of the endeavor to get that bridge replaced, that would be a, a, a good point uh, as far as I'm concerned. I'd appreciate it as your representative. <clears throat> Additionally, with regard to the Metropolitan the Transit Association over in West Virginia, it's in the process of being reorganized. The old transit system was dissolved. The new one was implemented and as of uh, the date of this meeting I attended, VHJ has allocated funds for operating 386,200, maintenance 30,000, and mobility management 67,100 hours. These funds are necessary so that entity can operate or start operation. Prior to, well, so prior to their being dissolved and basically shut down operation-wise, uh, it was very, very poorly run. The finances and the assets left over with regard to the op that entity, all of that had to be, the the, uh, any kind of plans of uh, operation, any kind of equipment, all of that had to be uh, dissolved and transferred over to the new street department in Weir, which has been done. The only thing lacking, they have an attorney representing the firm, they have a, a manager, they have got, and they're looking at a, uh, acquiring the services of an accountant to get uh, their situation going. And as of and information from Mike Proprocki, the director of BHK, they're looking at January 1st, 2024, they get operations going. So they got the funding, they have a, they're going to have a new board and a new management, and hopefully a success with regard to keep, get that up, uh, transit system going. Uh, <clears throat> Other than uh, local projects, uh, Lovers Lane, uh, Mike Dolak, the engineer for Stupid Mills, in the process of applying for federal grants to complete that project and mainly widening of the road. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into all of the only thing close with the Garden State of Ohio, close proximity out of State Route 43 and County Road 43, that's the road, the first road you get to. They're going to widen that as it approaches on the 43, but that's scheduled down the road. It may not look be done until 2025. West Virginia has several, five, six pages of things that they're in a process of completing or future needs of uh, taking care of because West Virginia, Department of Transportation, takes care of all roads in West Virginia. <coughs> so they have a big job and uh, 
they, uh, they, need the, they uh, have to obtain federal funds, state funds, to get the job done. Other than that, uh, got any other questions concerning? Bob, I got a couple quick questions. On the uh, Long Range Transportation Plan Survey, um, I, I see where they're you know, very appreciative that you fill it out, but it doesn't say where to return it to on here. Well, is this a it, it doesn't, but I don't know why they didn't do it. But I'm, you send it to BHJ. Uh, yeah, the address is on Fourth Street. I can't. Okay. But attention, Matt, M A T T, Townsend, T O W N, S A N D. Okay, that's good. On, on, um, <clears throat> on the report you had. Yeah. Uh, some of the photos on there were pretty shocking and concerning. I've never been underneath that bridge, but uh, when you see some of these photos that are underneath the bridge, it is um, it is concerning yeah. at, at a minimum. And to rate this bridge poor may be, um, you know, maybe a bit much. Okay. I mean, it may yeah. not even be well, poor. Okay. It might even be worse than poor. But but on the website, um, is this report? And these photos on the website are they accessible? Is this for the general public to take a look at? Because if they, if BHJ would post these on the website, I mean that would be very, they would get some momentum on repairing that bridge. I, I don't something. know if the entire application process is there, but I'll tell you one thing: our county engineer, yeah, has indicated several times at meetings that he classifies this bridges. Worse than poor. Yeah, I, I and, and our, our pictures are just in black and you, white. As you drive uh, into the bridge, recently, you know the signs that you see there Seven, up and down. Six. They've lowered those signs as of September this year. Yeah, and people continually go through it. Bash it, yeah. But right as you drive into it on the Ohio side, you'll see in the. <coughs> diagrams of the bridge at the very front that's the worst area yeah. with the pillars and foundations and it'll spell out in there the the sections of the bridge like one and two and it, you could see where that is located in those sections in the diagrams i gave you yeah so the only problem is west virginia owns the bridge West Virginia is a, a date of 2008 came up with regard to funding or possibility of addressing the problem. Uh, I think the HJ, people who were there at the meeting, myself in the feel that this has got to be pushed to a point prior to a major catastrophe. It's that bread. And I'm not shy from expressing the situation, the need for that bridge to be taken down, and acceleration with a new bridge being put in as quickly as possible. Yeah. So that's where I stand. That's yeah. where. Yeah. I listen. Those those pictures. BH. I think it would be in BHJ's best interest to make sure those yeah. are seen by the general public. I travel over that bridge maybe twice a week, so maybe six, seven times a month. All right, I go on over there when I leave work to go to cigar shop, Yorgos, Polish Club, whatever. You know, you just zip on over there. Uh, I think I'll be taking the, the you know the Veterans Bridge from here on in because it's um you know it's concerning. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate yeah. your time. It is concerning, and uh, I think the people. At the meeting, now you're talking about representatives of the various community, and uh, Dr. Penny Scarpo was there uh, at the meeting, and so she's aware of what was discussed. And the fact that the public is aware, tot not totally aware of the condition of this situation, but of all those representatives that were there, they have obtain copies of what I gave you all. Yeah. So for the public to know about it, hear about it, and do something with regard to that survey, I think it's important because you can't have that thing in a situation where a major accident occurs. So 
I'd appreciate anything we could do to get it done. Thanks, Bob. Anything else? Yes. One more thing along those lines. You can do a search on 2050 BHJ Long Range Transportation Plan Survey, and it is online. And it looks like you can fill it out and you can submit it right from your phone or your PC. Uh, the last part, what? You can, you can fill it out online yeah, and submit I'll, it from your phone or your PC. Okay. I didn't realize that. Uh, but if not, you can do it online. But if you do, put the name Matt Townsend. You got it. I ordinarily, I think he would get it because he handles these uh, inquiries and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, uh, I'm going through the Market Street. One last thing here, I'll show you just a print out here. Small print, but this is the amount of money that BHJ has acquired since 2003. <clears throat> You're talking about the first uh, grant they got with regard to cleanup of oil or difficulty with regard to a gas station or whatever uh, to clean it up. <clears throat> that was the $300,000 figure. Right now, they're in a process of consistently applying for grants at different locations to get these sites taken care of and cleaned up. Some of the big ones that occur up in uh, the northern part of Chester, they had an old manufacturing plant up there that they tore down and cleaned up completely, and uh, that was several million dollars. <coughs> The figures for the future concerning cleanup sites, astronomical, way more than 300,000 than the initial operation. So it's a continual program with the, in this area here, with regard to coal operations and old factories that had to be torn, uh, torn down and the service has to be checked, the subsurface has to be checked. And as a result, I think uh, the, pro will, the program will be continued and it will be highly supported by the federal government and we're going to, BHG is going to take involvement in that to get the money. So, anything else? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Locker. Oh. Charlene, do you have anything this evening? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Hello. Um, SBRTA. Uh, ridership right now as of August 31st, 2023, 12.2% year to date from last year, which is very good. Uh, Wellsburg, Ben Battenberg. Ben Battenberg, Wells Township Trustee. He approached SVRTA regarding transit service to Wellsburg. We told him that that is out of our service area. However, if Wellsburg approached SVRTA, that we would look into what services may look like to Wellsburg. Out of street properties request for qualifications. SVRTA received one request for qualifications, RFQ regarding the ODOD ab abandoned gas station grant. The building and grounds committee met and reviewed the RFQ and is re recommending silver and environmental consultants be rewarded. The contract. Uh, marketing website. The SVRTA.com website is currently up and running. Uh, levy. The SVRTA will need to provide a resolution to the Jefferson County Auditor to begin the process of being placed on the ballot. Beginning with May 2nd, 2023 election, HB 140 changed the ballot language. 
And regarding this, Mr. Deanna Ball, SVRTA Legal Counsel, he's looking into this matter because he doesn't like the situation on it. So, for right now, we don't know what's going to be farther down the line, but he just found out about it and he has concerns about it. So, that's what's going on right now with SVRTA. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. All right. Moving on to the mayor's report. Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir mayor. Next week for Thanksgiving, just a reminder, anyone that has garbage pickup normally on Thursday, your pickup will be Friday. Uh, please be patient on Friday. It will take us a while running uh, three routes that day. So again, if your pickup is normally on Thursday, it'll be moved to Friday after Thanksgiving. Just want to tell Holly Moffitt and Jesse Kasegi a great job on the Christmas lights. You guys, in my opinion, that I don't know if they've ever looked so good. They spent a lot of time. I know we got a few polls that we're getting to AEP to make sure to check on the electric being out, but the Christmas lights themselves look awesome. You guys did a great job. I know Jesse's going to say it was all Holly, but Jesse was hauling them in and out of the house and helping Holly as well. So thank you both very much. They, they look tremendous. Uh, some exciting news. I did speak to uh, Jefferson County Judge Mike Bednar. He is hoping that the county court will hopefully be in to their new location here within the village of Wintersville. Hopefully sometime in January is their hope. Um, he's going to keep me posted as that continues to progress. Council, I just want to let you know Indian Creek Career and Tech Advisory Board, I've been at, asked to be on that board. We had our first meeting yesterday. Um, one area they need some help with that could also help us and help the future. So they do have students that do work programs um, with different part-time at different places. I know they got some at Dunkin' Donuts, they said, a few other places around the village. Uh, I mentioned that we would gladly be able to take a, a student if they were interested in possibly learning you know, stuff at the street garage, possibly the water department. So hopefully it's a win-win for uh, the student and us as well, trying to help them out. Griffin Paving was able to come today. I don't know if anybody had a chance or if you went down. I know Jesse and I both checked out Winter Drive. Uh, Woodridge got finished. Larray got finished. And I believe they were up on... Everything's done. Everything's done. There you go. Uh, they did the thermoplastic on all three of those roads, and they fixed the small part up at Fernwood and Main. Um, where you turn in, obviously, thank you, Council, for approving that job. Those three roads have all recently been pa paved, and now they got striping that should last a lot longer than the normal uh, striping. Next council, as we discussed in the finance meeting, may I have a motion for a thousand dollars to spend on the Christmas luncheon for the employees? I think this year it'd be on December. And council, you're obviously welcome to be here. It would be Friday, December twenty second for the employees. So moved on that thousand dollars. Second. Mr. Merriman. Yeah. Mr. Mattern? Yes. Mr. Spence? Yay. Ms. Dameron? Yay. Thank you. Last motion I would need from the finance meeting as well would be the $75 gift cards for a Christmas present for each employee. So moved. Second. Mr. Merriman? Yay. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence? Yay. Ms. Dameron? Yay. Thank you, Council. That is all I have. I will turn it over for the administrator's report. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> all right. In regards to the leaf pickup, we had a situation where one of the machine that does the 
a leaf pickup went down. Uh, we called the company. It was on, I believe, Monday. Uh, they were UPS in a part. Um, it was on the tongue area of the machine. It bent. Nobody got hurt. Nobody was around it, which is good. It was already on the uh, truck. And then the truck blew a hose, so that was fixed the next day. So, so we're about a day behind. Um, we will get the leaves. We may have to work a little extra to get it, but we will get that done. It's not a problem. Uh, paving and striping, as the mayor said, Griffin Paving came today. They started at 2.30 p.m. They were done at 7.03. The, the gentleman uh, texted me, said they're all done. Everything is taken care of. And up at uh, the intersection of Fernwood Main on Fernwood, that was thermostriped where the stop bar was brought back a little bit from where it was supposed to be. So we're good on that. So that is completed. Barbigas will be down here tomorrow. They're planning on coming down here tomorrow to do curb work. As the people of Rex and Day Circle in Russell area, uh, they were down here this week. They tried to set the curbs with asphalt. It didn't work. It was a wasted day. The plants that produce the asphalt didn't have the right mix so it was a lost cause but they did do the patchwork down uh, on the bottom of rex avenue there was some soft pavement that we're responsible for so they fixed it correctly um, they did an excellent job on that so tentatively they're coming down tomorrow unless it's colder or rains or something like that but uh their communication is pretty good they, they let me know what's going on so all the paving is done on Rex Russell, Day Circle, Woodridge, Simpson, Patton, and Marshall. They did an excellent job. Uh, I can't thank them enough. Good group of guys and ladies. They were, they were just really awesome, very professional. Uh, their milling crews is different from their asphalt crew, is different from their curb crew. It's all different guys. Uh, the gas tank project um, spoke with Jason from TS Electric. He's going to be starting on the electrical part of it probably within the next coming weeks. And then once that's done, he's going to hand it off to the, uh, the company gentleman that does the install of the pump and software. And then we'll be ready to roll after that. So we got a new gas tank. We got a new diesel tank, double wall, don't have to be inspected. We're good to go for many years. So if everything goes correctly, I'm going to have a, uh, a better estimate on how long it's going to take for us to pay that off in savings on our gas. Initially, it was about four years, three and a half to four years. We'd have a return on investment on what we saved on um, fuel. So that, that's good. It's good for the village. <sighs> BWC grant. Regarding the purchase of the portable tra uh, traffic lights, they are scheduled to be here probably around next week. Uh, he said tomorrow, like the 17th, but I think we're going to do it uh, a day where he's going to uh, deliver the portable traffic lights. So we have four traffic lights, two on north, two on south, two east, two west, however you want to set it up, whatever direction you want to go. Uh, he's going to have the signage. They are going to be in an enclosed utility trailer which is going to be really nice. Uh, that's something that uh, really sets this company aside from other companies. It's A&A Safety out of uh, Cullum, correction, Cleveland and Cincinnati. So what we're going to do is we'll, when they come, we're going to have a training day. So the police department, water, wastewater, sanitation, uh, mayor, myself, the fire department, um, we're going to have like, you know, just have a quick training on it and to learn how, you know, how to use it. If, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning and the police department needs it, they can, you know, grab a truck, grab the trailer and go and set up. So um, that's going to be a good thing. I think that's exciting and it's going to save on time. It's going to save on having, having to have one officer or two officers sit out there for 10, 12 hours or however many times. It's going to be all automated. But we'll, uh, I'll bring you more information when, um, when it gets delivered. Pretty excited about that. Water meter project. As of right now, I counted approximately 525 installed uh, meters as of today. It's going well. They've got, uh, they're busy every day doing it. Um, things are moving along. We have, we're, 
we still have to get some more computer uh, software from from Core and Maine from Census, but it's the girls are working in transferring everything over to the new system. So once the new system gets once the new billing system gets installed, or it's all installed. We're just doing all the transfers. We still have the old system. We're using that as our backup until we have everything we need. Then we can shut that off. Uh, also, thanks to uh, Captain Fabian, who was the IT guy who set up Deb's computer, Tina's computer, my computer, Tammy's computer, and a spare one. Uh, and the reason why I say mine and Tammy, we're all going to learn how to do billing. We're all going to learn how to do, um, you know, take um, take calls for if there's somebody needs to pay a water bill, if there's an issue. So everybody's going to learn how to do the job. On the, on the financial side of it, that's going to be Deb and Tina. Deb and Tina are going to learn how to do the same thing. But as far as me, maybe the future fiscal officer and Tammy, we can go out, we can get in, I can get on my computer, log in, and do what I need to do. Which is all, another thing that you can do is you can do um, reports for if something's going off the street department, they need to take care of something, you can put a, put a request in, put an incident, and it's logged. That's going to be a nice thing. It's a reporting system, so that's, that's awesome. And Ohio Software, Jim is is amazing. It's, he's, he's an amazing guy. He knows what he's doing. He's got a he's got a great uh, program. Other information: uh, We signed our 2024 property casualty policy with McBain Insurance again this year. Uh, Kathy McGooseck, she's she's awesome. She came to the office. We sat down, went through it. So we're good to go for another year. Our cyber. Uh, we also have our cyber insurance that's due around February. So myself and Captain Fabian are involved with that. Um, so we'll, that'll be coming up. So as the mayor said, the village offices will be closed the 23rd and 24th. Uh, one more side note before I finish. Uh, we hired a new um, full-time laborer. His name's Ryan Gorby. He's from Unionport area. Uh, he was in the military for 14 years, uh, got out. Now he's in the police academy. Uh, he brings some experience. He was a jet mechanic for 14 years. Uh, so we I interviewed him twice, almost three times. And he's going to be in, he's going to be like a floater. He's going to be in street, water, wastewater, sanitation. He's going to be all over wherever he's needed. Uh, he's a great young man, and I think he's going to do well. He's going to do well in the police um, academy. And that may segue him into the police department in the future, we will see. So the Christmas decorations. So let's see here. So I just typed this out real quick. Uh, earlier this year, <clears throat> we had our Christmas decorations that were powder coated. The old existing lights were taken off, uh, off the decorations. So from there, we sent them out to be powder coated. Um, new decorations were about 500 bucks a piece. So to do a total of 76 decorations, it broke down to about 125 per decoration to powder coat from the company that um, Randy from the street department uh, recommended. So fast forward to October 23, about October 24th, 25th, uh, Holly Moffitt, who's a resident of Wintersville since 2007, took it upon herself, she's also an RN, uh, took it upon herself to see what she could do about the lights. Long story short, I brought one decoration home, and then I brought another one home. I brought a, uh, a, a star and a snowflake. She went into action. For you that don't know her, she is a professional crafter now. This is what she does. And... Uh, You'll probably start seeing more of her stuff. Um, she kind of keeps quiet about it, but I think it's going to it's going to get out now. The um, so she went into action, measured, did some research for the best possible lights. So she did about five different types of light bulbs, different colors. Did they blink? Are they going to be non-blinking? Do we want big lights or little lights? LEDs. So she spent about ten hours just to find out what would work. So I came home from a council meeting, probably two council meetings ago. It's about, what, 9 o'clock. And she's out in the middle of the driveway, zip ties everywhere. I said, what, what's going on? And she, she took them on, took them off, put them back on because she had to make them fit. She, it's, like a, it's like a puzzle. After that, she says, she said, Jesse, I need 84 boxes of cool white lights, 
300 per box, 59 feet. 59 feet will work perfectly for both the Snowflake and the Star. She said, Amazon doesn't have it. Nobody has it. No other store has it but Walmart. I said, 84 boxes. Okay. So I got online. I put in 84 boxes in my cart. And they had them in Weirton. I said, well, this is probably, this is probably not going to work. Less than 16 hours, a girl delivered 84 boxes of, of, of lights. At the, at, and I just couldn't believe it, how close we are to Thanksgiving and Christmas. So then she said, hey, I need a three-foot black extension cord because the lights are not going to dangle up to the, uh, to the outlet. It's going to be on the light itself, as you see. She said, I want black because you won't see it at nighttime. It'll, it'll just blend right in. I said, okay. Amazon had it, had it within two days. So the breakdown of this was 76 decorations. So Randy and Mark and everybody brought the whole trailer over to my house, her house, or what do you want to call it? So it's in the driveway. People are like, what's going on? I was like, this is what's going on, the neighbors. So we had decorations all over the, all over the driveway, leaning on the, on the garage, on the back porch, in the house. So 76 decorations, this is the breakdown, 56 snowflakes, 20 stars, 19,800 lights, 4,016 feet of lights, approximately 150 zip ties per decoration. We, her and I bought 11,000 zip ties. We bought them from everywhere. It took Holly 18 days to complete. She did it in 18 days. I helped her. She did this. I calculated 120 hours of work to do this. And she says, I, I want to add some greenery. I want to add. I says, hold on. She said, I don't have time. I said, you know what? I said, let's get them up. I said, you'll look at them. I said, next year we'll do something different. We'll do. She's like, okay. So that's, that's, I just wanted to say that. That's all I have. If anybody has questions. She did an awesome job. Thank you. Your, num your number was just a little off. So, Holly, you had roughly five, 500. It actually would have cost us right around 1000 per decoration if we had to buy them new. They were, If I remember, they were about $675 when I talked to the company, plus all the shipping. The shipping. The shipping. So, shipping. thank you to both of you, and especially Holly, because she saved this village. I mean, we would have never even had $76,000 to spend on our beautiful Christmas decorations. So She's the best. I'm proud of her. That's awesome. We really appreciate the volunteering uh, and the time. She, it's all her, man. She, She's the best. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Moving on to unfinished business. Nobody got on. All right. Moving on to new business. <clears throat> Anybody? Did we nail down a finance meeting for Monday? Is that a go or no go? Or are we still no. 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 no? no. We might shoot for after uh, when next date would. Okay. We might try for it right after Thanksgiving there. Um. Very good job, Holly. Absolutely. I made mention of it last meeting as well. The efforts are greatly appreciated. I, you know. It, just you know, uh, the beautification of the of the uh, village. I, I actually drove down uh, through Wintersville the other day. I haven't been that way in a while, and I saw the wall, so that was uh, quite impressive down there too. Um, and the passing of Joe Crow, um, very nice guy. Golfed with him several times. Another guy who passed away that really helped out this village with some IT stuff. <clears throat> before was Kurt Vanderborn. He passed away, and he was a asset to the community, especially the young people uh, with the Sunville Catholic Central. So um, um, a lot of heavy hearts this holiday season. Last thing I got is happy Thanksgiving to all. Safe travels if you're visiting friend, family, and loved ones. And um, uh, our drivers where I work at uh, over this past week, I don't know if it's an enforcement uh, push or whatever, but there's been uh, um, heavy presence of police officers out there, DOT, uh, ramping up for the holiday season, and of course the tragedy the mayor spoke of uh, early with Tuskegee Valley, uh, those um, parents and uh, students out there. So um, 
you know, there's going to be a presence of, of enforcement officers. I expect our guys to be out there as well. And um, <coughs> still, be safe, 10 and 2, keep the speed limit. There's going to be a lot of people on the roads for this holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jason. I got a couple things also to uh, wrap up from the finance meeting. We did approve the, um, I believe it was McCoy medical benefits, but we didn't approve the association of McCoy benefits with Lincoln Financial for the insurance, the dental, the vision, and the life. So can I get a motion from council to approve the use of Lincoln Financial for dental, vision, and life? So Second. Mr. Merriman? Yay. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence? Yay. Ms. Dameron? Yay. <clears throat> okay, that's one. And a motion to approve the longevity benefits for the employees of Warnersville for 2024. Sent motion to approve the benefits for the longevity. Second. Mr. Merriman? Yay. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence? Yay. Mrs. Dameron? Yay. And... And we also talked about the $50 gift card for the best decorated home for Christmas. Oh, I missed that on my announcement. And that was, I believe that was seven $50 gift cards Yes, we're going to purchase. And we will be doing that uh, Saturday and Sunday, December 16th and December 17th. I make the motion to move forward with the $50 gift cards for the best decorations for seven homes. So moved. Second. And can we please have Tammy just send out an email reminder just in case? Mr. Merriman? Yay. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence, yay. Mrs. Dameron? Yay. Okay. And again, I just want to thank Holly and Jesse for working on the Christmas lights. I think we can give Jesse a new nickname, Clark Griswold. <laughs> so <laughs> have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Go, <I> like that. <laughs> Anybody got anything else for new business? All right. So transfers, we would need a motion. There is a payment. Everyone get a chance to pay the bills. We would need a motion to pay the bills. So moved on the bills. Second. Mr. Merriman. Yay. Mr. Mattern. Yay. Mr. Spence. Yay. Ms. Dameron. Yay. Just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mr. Merriman? Yay. Mr. Mattern? Yay. Mr. Spence? Yay. Mrs. Dameron? Yay. Our next meeting will be December 7th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>